limited government, establishing a gold standard, auditing the Federal Reserve. These are some of the ideas that Republican presidential hopeful Ron, Congressman Ron Paul has espoused over the years, and he hopes it will gain voter support in the 2012 election next year. Will the third time be the charm? Of course, as you know, Congressman Paul ran for president in 1988, again in 2008, and he is expected to again next year. He joins me today from Capitol Hill. Congressman Paul, always good to see you again. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Let me start with uh, Congressman Ryan's budget uh, uh, proposal, which passed the House last month, as you know. The Senate is expected actually to vote on it in about an hour, a little less than an hour, 45 minutes or thereabouts. Um, you know, as the Democrats try to get the Republicans in the Senate to take a stand on this idea to scale back Medicare for future generations, it passed the House. Do you think it'll pass the Senate? Well, I suspect it will, but I have no idea. I haven't counted votes over there. But uh, when it came in, into the House, I actually didn't vote against it. A few of us, a few Republicans voted against it. And it wasn't so much that uh, I didn't like what he was trying to do, but I thought it was rather feeble and not addressing it. And I, I didn't like the priorities either. Going after the medical uh, care, uh, to me, is not top priority. I have other priorities that I would address that I think would be at least a little less politically, uh, you know, aggravating to so many people because now just people are arguing and screaming and hollering and shouting at each other that you're going to destroy the world. And, and really, his attempt was a, a rather modest attempt as far as I'm concerned. So uh, you're mindful of the people who will fear that Congress, in the attempt to try and, you know, li limit spending in the, in the economy and uh, keep the debt limit where it is right now, want to touch Medicare. They might want to touch Social Security at some point, and you're mindful that that might not be politically yeah. palatable right now? I, I am mindful of it, but I'm also mindful of the fact that if we don't do something, the whole system is falling apart. The, the uh, obligations that we have there are unsustainable. We can't meet them. So if we don't do something, the whole thing will collapse, you know, with a dollar crisis and runaway inflation. So I think it's a, a very serious problem. But if we were going to do it deliberately, I think the amount of money we spend overseas, you could cut hundreds of billions of dollars from our type of foreign policy that we're running without, you know, hitting medical care initially. I think eventually, though, everything's going to have to get cut, and everything is going to self-destruct, though, if we don't get a handle on this. I mean, uh, they're worrying about, you know, raising the debt limit and the credit of the United States, and I'm worrying about the value of the dollar is what I'm worried about, because long term, it has to go down as long as you run deficits of these uh, one and two trillion dollars, and you just print money when you need it. I mean, this is destined to uh, do great damage to the dollar, and I think weak dollars aren't good for us. Well, I, mean, I was intrigued by your talk that maybe one way to help uh, bring our house into fiscal order, we'd have to sell off assets, land and gold. You're saying maybe we have to sell off the gold uh, that the United States holds, which would total about $370 billion by the Treasury's estimate. But yet, I mean, I've been following your career well before you were in Congress. You're one of the original gold standard advocates uh, out there. And how can you have a gold standard if you don't have gold? Well, the gold has to be in the hands of the people. Where did they get the gold? They confiscated it from the people in the 1930s. So I think it should be hands of the people, and we should legalize its use as legal tender. The government doesn't have to hold it. But uh, the comments about selling it now, I mean, uh, hopefully we'd come to our senses. But in the meantime, if an individual gets into trouble and they have assets, they might sell their stocks or they might, you know, cash in their CDs, and they cash in their assets in order to pay the bills if they don't want to get a bad reputation for not paying their bills. So why can't a country do that? And besides, I'd sort of like to see if there's gold is, how much gold is actually there and whether we've made any, uh, any agreements to loan out our gold or sell the gold, because there's a lot of questions about that. Matter of fact, I'm going to have hearings on, you know, having a true audit of the gold. And they're very, very resistant to that. But if the gold is all there and there are no attachments to the gold, what's the big deal? Why, why shouldn't the people know that it's there? And if we need to, we, need to, we, we can sell some of it and pay the bills and, and uh, not have to scream and holler about uh, raising the debt limit. I just don't think raising the debt limit is very good for the future of this country. I don't know if you'd heard, but uh, next half hour, uh, we're going to have uh, Congressman Barney Frank on as well to talk about this issue of raising the debt 
ceiling and the debt crisis and so forth. I mean, there can be nobody more different from you ideologically, I think, in Congress than Barney Frank. But there is one thing that both of you are agreeing on. You're both saying the same thing right now, and that is this. Maybe the government does need to miss a few payments. Maybe there does need to be something of a debt default in order to get Congress off the dime and do meaningful deficit reduction. Yeah. Really? I yeah, I think so, because, you know, they, they, they try to uh, pump up the fear and scare us into doing things. That's the way things are done here, like the bailouts came by terrorizing all the members of Congress at the end of the world will come. But they said that what we would be doing is defaulting. But don't we default when you uh, devalue and depreciate the currency? Don't you default if your dollar's worth 90 cents next year or 50 cents? It, it's continuously defaulting. We've done it, and, and we've defaulted when we promised to pay in gold. We just And the court stood behind behind the Federal Reserve and the Treasury. We just aren't going to give you your gold. So they defaulted. I, and, I, uh, I and, can't and, imagine, though, that you're advocating, uh, you know, damaging the full faith and credit of the United States government and its ability to maintain a AAA credit rating and pay its debts and attract borrowers who are so necessary to keep our government running. No, I, I didn't say not to pay it. I just said you don't have to raise the debt limit to do it. Why? But, but if, don't if you, you have risk, cash We have cash Don't you flow. risk hurting the trust? that borrowers will have, uh, you know, the Chinese, the Japanese, you know, whoever it may be, if there is a risk of default and we do miss payments, then we well, have to pay more for our debt going down the road. I, I don't think we have to have to miss the payments, but what happens if you have a terrible, terrible depreciation of the currency and wild inflation, you're looking at a lot worse problem than, than uh, maybe assuming that we won't raise the debt limit, but we'll pay you first, but we have a tight budget, but you don't have to, you don't have to default on making the payments. Uh, and like I say, it, you're worried about the Chinese getting their payments. I'm worrying about the American people getting defaulted by having the depreciation of the currency and their prices go up. Every time they go buy gasoline, they ought to say, huh, my dollar's not buying very much anymore. That's a default that we ought to be concerned about as well. You want to run for president. Are, you, you, you realize the, the low ratings that not only the president but Congress gets on the handling of the economy. I, don't you, you realize, I would think, that people are just very tired of all of the, the, the wrangling that goes on in Congress without much getting done, whether it's on the debt issue or on health care recovery or, you know, whatever the issue may be. It, it has been a Congress that has been doing brinkmanship for a number of years now. Aren't you tired of all that? Uh, absolutely. That's why I think we should quit running the economy. My position is that no one person or no Federal Reserve system can central economically plan. I want to get them out of the business. I think investors should run the, run the economy. I think they should produce the jobs, not, not the government. And I think the one concept that we have to address someday is that capital can't come out of a spigot. We think that capital comes from the creation of new money and credit by the Federal Reserve. And, and cap, uh, capital in a free market, if we understand true, true free market capital, it comes out of savings. We have to work, you have to produce, and you have to save. That's where true capital comes from. This pretense that you just turn on a spigot and you get money and credit, all that does is cause malinvestment, excessive debt, and bails out the wrong people. How do you do that, though, sir, when we are mindful of how, what, what percentage the entitlement programs in our country represent to our budget right now, Medicare and Social Security? How do you get meaningful deficit reduction, no raising the debt limit, as you advocate right now, without touching those sacred cows in this economy? Well, I, I don't think you can. I'm just saying where you can start. And, of course, I told you where I would start. I would right. start with our military-industrial complex and, and the foreign policy and these useless, uh, very damaging wars. And then you do have to cut. Everything should be up to grab. My goal is to get back to the Constitution. If it's not there in Article 1, Section 8, we shouldn't be doing it. We shouldn't be. Why are we bailing out rich farmers? I mean, why, why do we even have those programs? So, yes, but the people aren't ready for that. That is true. And everybody, that's why nothing happens here is because everybody who's getting a check from government, and that's a lot of people, they come and say, yeah, we're in trouble. You ought to cut back. But don't cut my special benefits. Exactly. But my... Can, can you realistically expect to be elected president? Can anybody realistically expect to be elected president of the United States if in their campaign they are advocating cuts in Medicare and Social Security? 
Only if the people come to realize that doing nothing is much worse, and within a year or so they may realize it doesn't matter anyway. What, what's the difference if Social Security recipients get a check and doesn't buy anything? And the cost of living is sky high and everybody's getting poorer. Well, maybe they'd have second thoughts and say, well, who has the answers? And the answers come from our traditions, from free markets and sound money and our Constitution. And, you know, strange as it may seem, I don't think people have to sacrifice. When I talk to the crowds that I talk, meet with, I tell them, you don't have to sacrifice. I want to give you your life back. I want to give you your, you know, your chance to keep what you earn. Get out of this tax system. Let you take care of your medical care. Now, if you don't have to pay income tax anymore, are you sacrificing? No. Who has to sacrifice? The people who've been on the receiving end, the people who got all the TARP funds and all the Fed loans, the trillions of dollars the Fed passed out. They're the ones who should be suffering, not the people who, if they are willing to work, they can keep what they earn. And we'll be ready for this because this system isn't working anymore and it's going to crumble within a relatively short period of time, within within a few years, I believe. All right. Congressman Paul, always good to see you. Thank you for joining Thank us today, you. sir.